Hello, welcome back to my channel. This is Bluefin Design and I'm Nikhil. And in this video, we are going to try to recreate the UI design for Instagram using the dark mode. In my previous videos, we've looked at how to make use of certain features available in Adobe XD in our designs. For example, using repeat grids to make our process faster, making use of components, prototyping, which is the most important thing in a design, navigation bars, using icons, design systems, and a lot of other features as well. So this video is all about combining all of those features and using it in a real project. But I've spent some time on Instagram looking for inspiration, and I thought it's a good idea to refresh all of those features into building an actual application. So let's get started. So I'm in Adobe XD and on your screen, we see two artboards. One artboard is, I've just used this as like a preparation artboard where I've um, dumped all my items. So we have certain icons that we're going to use and we see daily on Instagram, certain character styles for comments and uh, the design for profile names and some icons again over here we're going to recreate the stories and also the posts as well so this is going to be a multi-part series where we'll take one uh, section of instagram at a time so in this video we're going to be creating the home screen which uh, i think it includes the stories on the top and the posts that you see from the people you follow so we'll recreate that artboard and those screens so i'm going to delete this and this because we're going to create those from scratch but i am going to use this to save time in my designs so first off i have the status bar on the top for an android phone i also have the navigation icons in the bottom which we're going to create a navigation bar quickly and um, so all of these individual icons they are in like the individual components so we can um, take advantage of components when we are prototyping so i am going to create a copy of all these five and pretty much just move them over here I am also going to zoom in real quick using the rectangle tool, create a group border with that background created. I'm going to just group all of the items in the navigation bar together. I'm going to fix the position from scrolling. Uh, so this is going to stay um, here even when we scroll on the page. Now I'm going to lock that. Let's create the header up top real quick. Like we did for the navigation bar, I'm going to create a background for these as well. I'm going to fix the scrolling, fix the position when scrolling and again lock this. I am also going to fix the position of the status bar on the top and lock it in place. And coming to this component screen, I am going to recreate um, story section up top. So the, we are going to take take advantage of repeat grids in this scenario. This is a placeholder for the profile picture for the people that you follow and that you see up top over there. I am going to create another ellipse, but this time we are only going to use the border. So if someone has shared a story, you will see um, like a colored circle outside their profile picture. But the problem with this is that we cannot give that gradient color to borders. So we have to use a workaround. And for that, I'm going to use fill color, remove the border. I'm going to create a duplicate of this, reduce the size. So I have two ellipses up on top of each other. So let me just, so you can see there's two different ellipses. I'm going to select both of those and use the exclude function which is a boolean function on the properties panel it will give us the differences so we now have a shape that resembles a border 
but we can add the fill color to this and with the fill color we do get an option for using linear gradients if i go down to my components or the libraries panel i have already saved the two colors on my palette so i'm simply going to view that color going back to the layers panel you may have also noticed your own profile picture up top on the story section where you can tap on this to add your own story so we are kind of making use of one single group to then make a repeat grid for all the items i'm going to add some text so going back to my libraries panel this is the final group that we're going to use for creating those stories instead of using just the text over here i'm going to make use of the component text so that we can make changes in the future very easily i'm going to delete this select this text and create a copy by pressing alt and then dragging this out and i'm going to make use of the plugin on adobe xd so with that text field selected i have a plugin called lorem ipsum which as the name suggests inserts placeholder text on the text fields with all of these layers selected again i'm going to press command or control g to group them together and give them a name story with this group selected i'm going to press alt or option on the keyboard and now i'll drag it to create a copy on my actual home screen so with the first one uh, if you've noticed on your instagram application um, it really doesn't have that gradient shape it only has your profile picture and this plus icon to add a, a story i'll select that item we just created again press alt or option and drag to create one more copy and this one is going to be for the stories from the people you follow so we do see the gradient color outline border but we don't really see this icon so i'm going to hide this or better yet just delete that you'll see the name of the person whose story you're viewing so now with this group selected i'm going to come to the properties panel and create a repeat grid so with a repeat grid in this case for stories it's going to be a horizontal repeat grid instead of the vertical one so i am actually extending the control point on the right i'm going to set the distance between each story and again like we did for the different groups i'm going to create a background for the story section and now i'm going to create a group and name it stories with that group selected i'm going to again come to the properties panel and if you notice over here we're going to create a horizontal scroll group so with the scroll group you can scroll horizontally in this case to see more stories on the right coming back to the layers panel we don't really need this folder so i'm going to um, right click and ungroup so we have the story section ready now we're going to focus on the post itself and to create the post we're going to actually build it from the ground up we will make use of a feature called components for making the posts so we'll make it over here so we now have the post header which will includes the photo of the person whose post it is the name of the account the location if they've added any and then an icon to see more options let's see how to add more uh the actual media like the photos or the videos that they've added so i'm again i'm going to create a shape real quick so in this example we are going to create a post which has a carousel of four items so you can imagine this as if you were adding four um images to your post like a single post but then we will add a mask um, so that only one of the post is visible at one time so i have four images or placeholders for images actually let me just give them their own colors 
so you see we have placeholders for four images you can add media um directly you can add drag like you know drag and drop any photos you have directly on these shapes and all of these features or methods i've actually shown them in a few of my previous videos so if you have any doubts you can always refer to those videos i'm going to use this white shape as a mask so at a time only one of the shape is visible so by selecting everything including the mask i'm going to right click mask with shape so now only one of them is visible but when you go get into the mask you can see you have all the other posts as well so this was a quick way to create the carousels i'm going to ungroup the repeat grid so we have four ellipses now i'm going to group them so it's not a repeat grid it's just a group since we're going to be seeing the first post i'm going to reduce the opacity for all the other three so i'm adding the icon in case the post has any tags on that and since this is a carousel post i'm also going to add the carousel indicator to the respective corners just in a bit we'll prototype this as well but before that i'm going to add the engagement icons over here so it's going to be like comment and share i'm also going to add one option to bookmark on the other side like we did for the other items i'm also going to add a background with all of these icons selected i'm going to group them together and name the folder engagement options it's already looking like an instagram post but we still have to add the comments section down below so let's add the likes section over here so i added an ellipse and then quickly created a repeat grid we're going to make use of a plugin to basically populate all of these images so stay tuned for that zooming out so next we'll add a line where it says liked by so and so person and others when you have multiple likes um this may be different on your phones depending on the version of instagram that you have but i'm going to go with this below that we have the caption for the post so i'm just using placeholder text uh, from the plugin uh, to fill up the space i'm also going to add a few emojis from my virtual keyboard on my computer and below that we have um, a text that says um, a link that says view all comments now depending on how many comments we have over on that post this may be different and instagram sometimes also shows the latest comment or at least one comment from somebody else on that post as well and to the right we have a heart icon to directly like that comment if we want to below that we have an option to add a comment to that post from our own account so we have the profile picture which is in this case my profile picture and then um a, a text saying add a comment and to the right there is this plus icon which we can tap on or we can tap anywhere on that line actually to add a comment in the end we also see the date or the time which uh, when this post was added so i'm just using as an example one day ago to signify that this post was added one day ago so this is what we've created so far we have the post header with the profile information and the options we have the actual post with the media we have engagement options to like comment and share and then the people who have liked the caption for the post and then some comments and some space to add your comment and the time when this was added so all of them together make a post so i'm going to group them all together we need to add um, the prototyping for viewing the carousels and the different photos in this post so i'm going to dig down into the media section and with 
the media the carousel the engagement options and these two icons over here selected i'm going to press command or control k to create a component name it media i'm going to move the component out of the group so i can move it outside and then use or edit the copy of the component in my posts so we're going to dive deeper into this main component for the media so we have these four images for the media i am going to add two shapes or two rectangles for prototyping and i'm going to set the opacity to zero so you don't see them in reality but they're just there this is the component i'm going to add one more state which is two out of four so in that state the second post is visible so i'm going to select all the four items in the media and simply move them so the second photo is going to be visible after the mask i'm going to repeat the process to show the third and the fourth photo that's the first photo second photo and with the second photo we do want to have the indicator say two out of four and similarly for the third photo and the fourth photo needless to say if you have five or six photos you'll have to create two more states over here and with the component selected now i'm going to go to the prototype tab from the layers panel with the default state selected this is slightly different in like you know from we actually what we actually have in on instagram there's a limitation on in adobe xd where the drag interaction does not lead us to a layer or the state of a component it actually only takes us to the artboards which is not something that we want in this case so uh, we're using this workaround for using like two empty shapes to simulate the interaction so i'm going to create an interaction when we tap on this area it's going to take us to the next state which is the second photo when we go to the second state or the second photo we want to if we click on the left side it takes us back to the first photo so we've made those changes and now since this was a component all of those interactions are actually propagated to the instances as well which is the post in this case i'm simply going to select the entire post group simply move it to my actual screen and let's save our progress and view the results so there's some glitches in the right prototype interaction we'll fix that because the left one is working fine the icons that i'm using they are components and i've added states so you can actually bookmark them or like them as well and as we already saw with the stories they are working you can actually scroll through the different stories in my next videos we will add the interaction and actually open up a story as well but as a last step in this video for the posts with that group selected the entire post i'm going to create a repeat grid and this time i'm going to drag the bottom controller so i have a vertical repeat grid with the repeat grid for stories and the posts selected on my layers panel i'm simply going to move them to the bottom so we see the navigation bar and the headers up on the top but again we can also add with the stories and the post repeat grid selected I can again add a vertical scroll so that my screen or the content on my screen does not overflow from my artboard and this will work without the scroll group as well but let's see the progress over here so I can still scroll through horizontally through the stories but then 
I can scroll vertically as well through the posts. I can interact with these posts and see through the different images that different people have uploaded. I can interact with the post and engage with them as well. The only thing left for us, as I mentioned earlier, is to add photos in these placeholders. So I'm going to dive down and select the individual shapes that we want to add photos to. And from my plugin called UI Faces, I'm going to add photos and I'm going to select this person does not exist. So you can use this plugin to actually add photos from uh, the internet. So I've added this photo and going back to the layers panel. I'm going to select the repeat grid and the added advantage of using repeat grids is that I can now randomly fill all of the nine items in that repeat grid with just a single click. I'm going to repeat this process with the post. I'll also add these photos to the likes over here. All the items down below in the repeat grid have been populated as well. I'm going to save my progress and let's see the progress so far. So we have the stories with people's photos. We have the posts. We have different carousels for multiple photos. We can engage with the post on Instagram and we can then scroll through for different content as well. So we created most of the items that we see on the home screen for Instagram. In the next videos, we'll see um, the search tabs, the reels, the stores page and the profile pages as well. And we'll create stories and add the interactions to those stories with these items over here as well. So if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, uh, be sure to do that. Also like and share this video with your network so more people can then make use of the different features available in Adobe XD and then use those features in actual projects. Thank you so much for watching.